fired it up, it didn't work at 1800. They're uh, a medium duty pump. Shouldn't be able to do it with my finger. I ain't that strong. Now we got full flow. Hi guys, this is Fraser from Lefko Hydraulics. Here we have another troubleshooting video for you on a piston pump. The customer was saying that immediately at the start of the day, the pump would not work. He would shut everything down, start it back up, and then the pump would work for the rest of the day. And he had to do that every single day. After a few weeks of this, he says, this is not right. He sends the pump in for us to take a look. So let's see if we can figure out what's going on with this pump, if anything at all. This is a PAVC 100. I don't see any damage here. Pistons all look pretty good from the top. So I don't feel any, any pull off. I don't feel any bellowing. Port plate looks good. So this is the servo piston. You want to make sure that there's no scratches or gouges or excessive clearance. That feels good. Very basic. <laughs> yeah. They're um, a medium duty pump. They're pretty simple. Okay, in an ideal world, we would love to just get the pump and put it right on the test stand, right from the customer without us touching it at all. Unfortunately, what happens if the pump has exploded inside and it's a bunch of metal pieces? We would have to clean out our entire test stand, which takes about eight hours. We need to take a look at what we're putting onto the bench before we do so. We need to open it up and actually make sure that everything is intact. Now, if he takes too much apart though, then he could fix the problem that was causing the issue. So it's a very delicate balance. He wants to take apart just enough to make sure that the pump is okay to go on our test stand, but he doesn't want to take apart too much that he ends up, when reassembling it, fixing the problem. The only other thing I'm, I'm gonna go through, make sure the differential looks good and it's free, make sure that there's nothing jammed up inside the uh, compensator adjustment, but for basics inside guts, there's nothing you can see. There's nothing inside that is causing any kind of a failure. So the customer was saying that it was working, but it wouldn't start, it wouldn't start up properly. They had to do a certain procedure and everything worked fine. We put it on our bench after we inspected everything. Right away, no issues, went to full pressure. Backed out the remote to set it at different points. And then I remember, it's a warranty, I better run it at 1800 just to make sure everything's like 100%. Kind of yeah, it, it run it at everything. And then when we fired it up, it didn't work at 1800. Oh. So the customer might be running it at straight 1800 and that's what's causing the issue, I don't know. Okay. Usually, if you're gonna have an issue or a failure, Nine times out of 10, it'll fail at 900 before it'll fail at 1800. Like okay. we've had several pumps run at 1800 and they seem good enough to pass. Yeah. But when we run them at 900, it's a little bit, it's not a pass. Uh, so uh, 900 is kind of a harder test to pass for most. Okay. So the 900 versus 1800 RPM, a lot going on there. Think of it as you have a puddle of water in a room and you have a broom. If you move the broom really slow through the puddle of water, the oil will slip past the broom. If you want to push the water, you need to broom really fast. If you run it at a lower RPM, the pump is gonna be less efficient because more of the oil is slipping past those pistons. That means that the, the, the time that they are pressurizing, they're pushing the oil, is twice as long. If you run it at 1800 RPM, the pistons are moving much faster and less oil is moving around the pistons. This means that the pump is going to appear to be more inefficient at 900 RPM. There's not a lot of people who know that. And the reason I know that not a lot of people know that is I only just learned that about a month ago. And I've been doing this for 20 years. Say so take it apart first. Overlook to make sure we didn't overlook something. 
if everything looks fine again, then we'll put it back on and... You start again? Yeah. With the original one that Parker installed, Parker did all the building on it. I could push this in and push it up with my finger. Usually these are a, not a press fit, but they're a tight fit where you have to take the proper tool to remove it and apply some force to have it come out of the house. Okay. Shouldn't be able to do it with my finger. I ain't that strong. So I found one that we have from a unit that failed in a different way. Put new seals on it for 90 durometer. They're a little bit harder. Now, my thought is, if I put it in with new seals and I can still push it out easy, the housing in here could be worn out. It's, it's machining, right? Tools wear out. Yep. Shit happens. I put this in and I can't get it to push out with my finger anymore. So I don't know if it's this was bypassing internally, externally, or the housing pushing it. So now hmm. we're in the process of step one thousand and six. Right? Gonna change the seals, reinstall all the original parts, put it on, check a few different things, to see if it works. Or not. So he got to the differential spool because he's following the number one rule of troubleshooting, which is isolating the problem. So once he confirmed that the Pressure compensation works just fine, but the, the remote does not work. He knows to look at the differential. Now we got full flow. Everything in that unit is the exact same that failed. The only thing I changed was three O-rings to a, a harder material. So it's possibly not rolling. It could be machined a little bit less. Or, it could be that when those got put in, they got sheared, and I couldn't, you can't tell by the feel. New O-rings fix the problem. Now what could cause these O-ring problems? Could be anything. We don't know. But it's an easy fix. But if it's a couple of O-rings and a little bit of frustration on our part to try to figure out what happened, uh, I think that it's all fine. And we'd like to just get this pump back to the customer so that they can get it back into service. And for all troubleshooting situations we don't charge labor and we don't charge uh, for test stand use every single one of those is an opportunity for us to learn something an opportunity for us to make uh, video content